Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks, and also welcome back to day two of Under the Hammer, a five-day event where you get to bid outrageous amounts of gold and a one-off outrageous amount of free experience to be able to get rare and exclusive tanks. Yesterday's tank was the 113 Beijing Opera. I managed to win it. I felt like I overpaid for it, however, although I am lucky to be in a position where I have lots of gold on this account. One thing that I missed in the video yesterday is yesterday's tank, the 113 Beijing Opera, actually came with a unique crew with unique artwork. And also, I didn't even realize this, and I don't think it's said in Wargaming's article, but please correct me in the comments down below if I'm wrong, that the vehicle actually came with a Brothers in Arms crew that has zero skill Brothers in Arms. So outrageous stuff there. Anyway, today, what is it going to be? What is going to be the tank that everybody's going to be bidding for? We should be able to find out. And oh my goodness gracious. Wow, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Now this is going to get very spicy. This is a brand new tier 10 tank destroyer. One that we have never seen before. It's the Object 268 version 5. And you are going to have to bid free experience to be able to get this tank. So firstly, before I talk about the free experience that you'll have to bid to be able to get this tank, to be able to get one of the 10,000 that are available on the European server, why don't we take a look at the Object 268 version 5. I can let you know all about this vehicle and then I can jump on my press account and then I can play it. So firstly, visual impressions. Kind of looks a lot like the hull of a T10 with a very different kind of turret on top. Doesn't look like a T-10's turret, looks like it might have been loosely based on it. Has a horrendous cupola on top of the vehicle. I wonder if this part is going to count as a hitbox, or if it's only the rim that's going to count as a hitbox. I expect that it's going to be the upper part as well, and I hope that's going to be a significant weak point. I expect this thing's going to have mediocre hull armor for a tier 10 tank destroyer. I think it's going to have a weak point on top of the turret. I'm very interested to see what kind of gun it's going to get. So let's compare the Object 268 version 5 to the Object 268 version 4 and the Object 268. And immediately we notice this tank has a very similar damage output to the Object 268 version 4. But unlike the Object 268 version 4, this 152mm packs 750 alpha damage, which is the same as all of the other tier 10 tank destroyers, such as the Object 268, the T110E4, or the T110E3. So that means that this vehicle is going to have a very poor rate of fire at just over three rounds a minute, which is the, the same as an E100 or a 60TP, roughly. But unlike those two tanks, this one's going to pack fantastic penetration, 303 millimeters of standard pen. And if we take a look at the gold rounds on this tank, they are a magnificent 395, and the high explosive rounds are 90 millimeters of penetration. I can tell you, if you get intuition on this vehicle, you are going to be able to do hot swap rounds for whatever the situation dictates. And to have a turret on this thing as well, I'm not sure how traversable it's going to be. Oh, this is an exciting prospect of a tank. The vehicle carries 30 rounds of ammunition, enough to deal 22,500 damage, should be decent indeed. Okay, so now onto the gun handling. Wow, the accuracy is way better than I thought it might be. 0.36 is not bad at all. While it's not a sniper like the 268, that's going to allow you to at least be almost like a reasonable medium tank, even at decent distances. The aim time on this vehicle is horrible at 3 seconds, and the dispersion values are horrific. 0.22 when moving and 0.2 when turning the turret. You are probably going to want to use a rotation device on this vehicle to try and improve those, or you're going to need magnificent cruise skills like snapshot, smooth ride to be able to improve that. Otherwise, this thing with that horrible aim time and the horrible dispersion is going to feel horrific until it is fully aimed, which will take a long time. Okay, really exciting stuff. This thing has a fully traversable turret, 180 degrees to the left, 180 degrees to the right. That makes this one of the most flexible tank destroyers that has ever gone into the game. Shame about the five degrees of gun depression, however. Gonna have to work around that, but I guess we, we can't have it all, right? So now onto the mobility of this vehicle, 48 kilometers an hour forwards, top limited speed of actually 32, which looks like this thing is going to have some horrendous ground resistances, and yes, it does. But don't fear about its horrendous ground resistances, as soon as you get the second field mod on this thing, it's going to feel a lot quicker. One of the most overpowered things about all of the tank destroyers in the game is they get, I believe it's 15% reduced ground resistances just from taking the second field mod. 
Nevertheless, this thing is going to feel quite sluggish if you expect it to be bombing it around like an Object 268 version 4, that's not going to be the case. It's going to be very interesting about what equipment you should use on this thing because it's looking like the turbo is not going to be so useful. However, of course, the turbo really helps the reverse speed and there is wonderful opportunities when you get to go down a hill. Looks like grousers might be the way forward for this tank. But again, today, this isn't going to be a full tank review. This is going to be just trying to get you up to speed about this vehicle and trying to let you know as quickly as possible how much free experience it's likely to be worth. So the turret reverse on this tank is not very good at 18 degrees. Again, a rotation device might help that out. And the tank's traverse speed is 20, meaning that this thing is going to be a slow lumbering beast, a bit like an Object 268 version 4, although the turret will really help to be able to add to your flexibility. Okay, this tank is so weird. It does have a hull that looks just like a T10. And let's be honest, that is really not a good thing. Its lower plate is 180, its upper plate is 200. That is going to be easily penetratable um, from pretty much most angles. The side of this tank at 50 degrees, that's really not good. You're actually going to get overmatched by yourself, like a 152 millimeter caliber gun. Although it does have nice angling all the way down the side. So if you do get shot in the middle of the vehicle, you should be protected. The turret armor on this tank is 230 on the front and 90 on the side. And let's take a look at that weak point. Yes, it is a very much a weak point all the way up. Even tier eight tanks are going to be able to pen that reliably. So that is looking like it could be a bit of a pain for this tank. Turret armor wise, you are going to be able to take hits. I guess if you're using some of your gun depression, your turret is going to be able to at least bounce tier eights and tier nines, but again, not reliably. On the outside of the cheeks, the turret armor is not good. And as soon as you turn the turret to the side, you are going to suffer with this vehicle. So a complete mixed bag. 2000 hit points is nice for a tank destroyer, especially one with a turret. And I'm really looking forward to seeing the view range. Oh no, it's got awful view range 360 meters means that unless you're using coated optics or binoculars you're never really going to get your view range up to a magnificent point until you have every field mod you have every crew skill and you are using a premium consumable but you know what i think that's quite enough faffing about this tank it basically looks like it's a t10 hull with a worse turret with a big juicy gun but i i wonder if the dpm is going to be enough for you to be able to feel like a bit of a powerhouse. My initial impressions of this thing is probably going to end up being quite lackluster. It looks like an E100 or a 60 TP that really doesn't have that much armor going for it. But the strength of the tank will be that it gets matched up against tank destroyers. And this thing, if it gets into a situation where it can use its flexibility to be an extra heavy tank, will end up being much more powerful than a tank destroyer is ever able to. All right, so let's play our first game for the Object 268 version 5. And we're pretty much gonna play as if we are a T10 with a chonky gun. I have two setups on this vehicle. One with gun rammer, vents, and a turbo, bond turbo. Although you're probably better to use grouses on this tank if you don't have access to a bond turbo. And I'm also using a build where I'm using an improved hardening device. That's for when I get onto my close quarters combat maps. Now, it's a bit unfortunate that I spawned it on Lakeville. This is the kind of map where you really want to have gun depression, which this tank doesn't have if you want to go into the valley. Nevertheless, I'm going to play like I'm a T10, basically. I'm going to try and make my way into the town, see if I can play a supporting role. My reverse speed is not too bad on this tank with a Bond Turbo, but it's definitely not going to be great if I wasn't using one. If you want to use some of the field mods, you can actually get up to a horrendously... Oh, 750 Alpha... And then to have this reverse speed as well on a TD, whoa. Yeah, the field mods on this thing are actually pretty wacky, um, YouTube. Uh, you can actually get 5% increased concealment. And seeing how this is effectively a heavy, that's outrageous. I've improved my accuracy on this tank to about 0.3, which is also fairly nice. I really don't want to get caught out here by like the 268 version 5. Oh, there's one on the enemy team. It must be one of Wargaming's contributors. Oh, great. He's shooting at me. Hooray, hooray, hooray. Well, we got 268 version 5 versus 268 version 5, and he's going to sit there opposite me in camp. All right. Anyway, well, you know what? This super conquer is going in. So, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, hello, hello, hello. Through your lower plate, maybe? Sun. Oh, yes. Catch that. All right, so I guess I just need to play some support here. And did you see how good my camo rating was? That's because heavy tanks and world of tanks have got really bad camo rating. Um, this one, on the other hand, uh, doesn't have bad camo rating because it's a tank destroyer. So we know that 268 version 5 is just chilling back there, but I feel like I've got to try and make a play anyway. I'm going to see if I can maybe make some pressure play on them. 
Maybe I'll try and get this E50 to support me. Try not to get clapped in the side by the Udes. Maybe I can try and make a flanking play on the side. I don't think he might consider that I can get him through this window here. Let's find out. See if we can set up a sneaky shot. See if we can manage to get some shells in. So I don't really want to camp too much right now. I feel like we've got the pressure. But it won't last for long if my 5120 is losing all his hit points. See, this is the awkward situation. How do you push a tank destroyer that is just so darn flexible in this situation? If I push around the corner, then it's very likely that the 268 version 5 is just going to come around the corner and clap me as well. But I guess I've just got to put some pressure up on the Super Conqueror, see if I can grind him down, ask this guy for some help, take a look at the Leopard camping at the back of the map and wince a little bit that I've got yet another tank that I have to deal with. Is my reload going to be good enough? Oh, it's actually not going to be quite good enough to be able to go after that player. Uh, the Super Conqueror seems to be pressured, but he does have a Leopard. I've got a 5100 behind me. Oh, 5120. Could be a little bit tricky here. Oh, hello. You just lost 470. I might go after this Super Conqueror, honestly. Is that through a wall? Oh, it is. But I have to low roll. Of course I have to low roll. So this 268 version 5 is under a lot of pressure right now, being spotted from the EBR. My Super Conqueror has got some pressure up on them as well. So let's see if we can continue the aggression. I'm honestly thinking about loading an HE shell here for the Super Conqueror. Let's bloody do it. Come on then, Super Conqueror. Take that. And this 268 version 5 on the enemy team looks like they're having a bit of a rough time with it. Are they tracked right now? Looks like they have the Arnie camo on and they are gone. Wow. Okay. How, what are the chances? 268 version 5 versus object 268 version 5. We'll have to take a look in the post-game stats to see how much damage they were able to deal. And right now, um, we're just going to have to see if we can push on. Okay, so this is where this tank shouldn't be too bad, actually. I've got concealment. I've got the top speed. So as long as I can go down slope a little bit, I should be okay. One thing that I'm lacking with my build, however, is view range. Um, and keep in mind that I have this thing maxed out pretty much, apart from using like a directive on the vehicle. So there was an M103 in the corner, but I'm not really going to worry about that too much. i got to be careful here. I don't want to get caught out. Um, remember that I'm not really like the super heavy turreted tank destroyer because I do have a weak point on top. But I got 24 spotting there. Not going to lie, that's a little bit disappointing. All right, let's continue plowing forwards. There's an RT somewhere, but I'm not going to let that bother me. Oh, there's a Concept 1B going for the corner. And I'm going to try and use my gun to take a few hit points off that M103. I have to admit, that looks pretty sick, boys and girls. And I'm going to use this EBR to try and advance the corner. I'm just going to take some pressure off my team here while I advance. I'm going to push this EBR into the cap circle. Don't worry, little guy. I'll keep you. I'll keep you happy. I'll keep you going. Oh, nice play by the concept to be able to shoot me there. But that's okay. I'm going to look for this M103's turret. Oh, everybody knows about the weak point already, boys and girls. Have I made a bit of a misplay here? Maybe I have. Maybe I can get this M103's weak point. I'm going to need my team to attack with me if I want to do this. So I'm going to need that leopard to be able to snipe in. Yeah, everybody knows about the weak point. Uh, there's not much that I can do in this situation, actually, right now. I've just got, uh, obviously, a good player playing well against me here in this situation. Although, he's not doing so well anymore. Not with that hit. Oh, you don't mess. This thing is like a, a live by the sword, die by the sword kind of tank. But they're just whiffing heat rounds at me now. Well, this is sad, isn't it? Team, can I have some help, please? Oh, yes! Let's go! Come on, baby! First game in the Object 268 version 5, and it's looking like an absolute beast lord of a game. Okay, so I finally pushed my mobile cover into position. Now, I've got to, what have I got to try and do? I've got to try and get that concept on the corner. I'm going to advance, but I've got to be ready to shoot him in the turret with an HE round. I don't really want to shoot the RT. I don't really want to shoot the RT. I don't want to die right now. I know that concept's going to come around the corner and try and go for me. Oh, yeah, whatever, dude. Whatever, dude. Concept 1B, usually a good player, very good tank. 5,300 damage and a victory here. And I felt like I did what I needed to do. Okay, so what did we find about the armor on this thing? If you're expecting the Object 268 version 5 to be like an all-purpose heavy tank that you can just sit hull down in, you definitely can't do that. If you're expecting the Object 268 version 5 to be this kind of like pseudo heavy, pseudo tank destroyer support vehicle that is going to be able to at least um, grind out its opponents, that's going to be the, uh, the case as well. I think it's going to be a support puncher that hits really hard. 
What a shame that I didn't quite manage to get through against that concept there. Otherwise, I probably would have been able to deliver a high explosive round to the back of the T-123. And I want to try and get at least one high explosive round in all, in all of you on YouTube today. Because I can tell you, with intuition, it could be fairly good. One thing I really liked about this game as well is I don't think I fired heat if I... Uh, maybe one at the M103. I don't know, man. Sometimes you just go into autopilot and use whatever you think the ammunition is for the job. But those 303 millimeter penetration standard rounds, they're going to be great for a free-to-play player. Um, it's kind of like a, <clears throat> a free-to-play tier 10 heavy from that kind of perspective. But to have the 395 heat as well will be sickening. All right, 5,300 damage. How did the Object 268 version 5 do? We can't actually take a look at their statistics. I don't know who Contributor 7 was, but they managed to do 1,200 damage and get a kill. Luckily, we were on top with 5,300 damage and 1,100 spotting. And well played to the concept on the enemy team. A 54% win rate player who did well against me in that position. I felt like I had to attack, and boy, am I happy I did so. So, so far, so good for the Object 268 version 5. Let's jump into another battle and see what we can do this time. All right, so yeah, uh, this tank is just such an enigma. It really is. It's kind of got this mediocre armor, mediocre mobility, but such a big boy gun. And to have that flexible turret, it just doesn't feel like it's a tank destroyer. I matched up against a gorilla. I think this thing is probably going to end up having a very good win ratio with players who know what to do. And it's probably going to end up having a very bad win ratio for any of the very casual players who get it. Because I reckon the casual players are going to go and play it as if it's a tank destroyer and sit at the back and not do very well. Okay, so what should I use here? Should I use a turbo or should I go for the improved hardening? I'm actually going to go for the improved hardening on this map because it's a bit of a knife fight. Okay, I'm not going to go snipe like I'm a tank destroyer. I'm going to go brawl like I'm a heavy. That's the plan. Another position that I could go into might be there, but I don't really have the best of view range. So what I think I want to do is just try and attack the south of this map. Although, I will highlight that because my weak point is on the right-hand side of my tank, that's not going to be very good. People will quickly realize that you can just shoot this thing in the left of the turret, though, and nail that. Oh, dudes, I should have been aimed at this 50B. No, I can't actually hit that 50B there, but I can hit this Udas if he comes around the corner, at least. Don't want to block my allies here. I always bump into my allies as I'm making my way through this position. But I understand that my medium tanks are wanting to try and snipe through. All right, that's interesting. So there's a chieftain that's made their way into the middle of the map. Do you know what I could have done in a tank destroyer here? What I could have done is actually made my way through to like this location with a bit of a speed rush at the beginning. That could have been absolutely savage. Okay, so it's, you don't really want to be playing against chieftains on the enemy team, but maybe I can make the difference, a bit like in that last game. We were just kind of like the support damage that really seemed to help out our team. Alright, I don't want to get caught there. I don't really have the gun depression to use that position. That Kranvang is sitting hull down with his turret. I don't want to mess around with that either. And this chieftain, he's going to start to try and whittle down these heavies. Do you know what I'm going to do? I don't feel like I'm destined for that location, so I'm going to fall back and see if I can maybe try and get some crossfire on this Udez and be ready to possibly try and make some pressure play down the center of the map. I feel like that's what this tank is going to be best for. It's like an opportunistic tank. An opportunistic tank, says Quacky Baby. Talk about opportunistic. How can I not find that Udez there? These trees just holding me back. I don't want to get shot by all of the TDs at the back. I could very easily lose 1,500 hit points here. Oh, that EBR is going in. All right, he should have absorbed all of the shells. No, I can't do this. I can't do that. There's just so many TDs there. This position never works out well. All right, so a little bit awkward. Uh, wow, you want to play? You want to play? All right, I'll help you. You want to play? Dude, I'm going to go in and try and get a kill on the Progetto. Mind. Did we set him on fire? We did. Got to be careful here. I'm trying to help this Kranvong out. God, my rate of fire sucks. That alpha damage is just so lovely. This T-123 is trying to find me. All right. Nice. Hopefully he'll kill him and then I can make a pressure play on the Chieftain. Go on, you can kill him and then I'll pressure play the Chieftain. I'm going to switch to high explosive anti-tank round here to try and go through that Chieftain's hull frontally or even the turret. 
And wow, look how good this thing is as a support tank, right? It's a very good support tank. Oh my god, do I get to kill a chieftain? Yes, I do. Oh my lord, this is the dream for the 268 version 5. Gets to kill a chieftain in a game and gets to win against a 268 version 5 on the enemy team that we know has to be played by at least a half-decent player, right? If they're a community contributor. I just got to overmatch that Udez with my 150mm caliber gun because I believe he's only got 50mm of side armor. That is really savage. Should we see if we can fire gold through the Krenvong's turret? I don't really have the hit points to tank anymore. Uh, maybe the T124 can help us out? I'm going to tell him I'm going to help him. Come on. Tank for me. I don't have the hull armor. There's one. Okay, I can take one from him. I can take one. I can take one. I can take one. Go on, shoot me. There you go. Team player quacky paps, right? Team player quacky paps. Oh. Another savage kill. Oh, man. This thing is actually voracious, boys and girls. This thing's voracious to have such a big gun. It kind of feels like a T-30, honestly. It feels a lot like a T-30. And that is a good thing. <laughs> Off with the T-62A's head. That's what big guns do, right? Oh, my lord. But the only difference is, is this thing is at tier 10. There are a few things that I don't like about the tank, however. I don't particularly like the vehicle's uh, armor. I don't like the vehicle's mobility. And I don't like the vehicle's DPM. The gun handling is also a little bit lackluster. I would actually say that it's probably best to not use a rotation device on this vehicle. But a lot of people will probably drop the vents and use the rotation device instead. I'm going to switch out to a heat round here because it will give me an advantage against the Fosh. I got a funny feeling that the guy might have gone down the back over here. Or he might be going after the arty. One of the two. I'm going to go and take a look. Maybe the Fosh kills me. Maybe the Fosh doesn't kill me. There he is. Oh, boys. That was a game. I like that. 5,000 damage in 5 minutes. Do you know what? This tank feels as if it is kind of quick enough to keep up with the meta. Darn, I was in the shade. That wouldn't make a good thumbnail. You can see I'm trying to multitask. Trying to get a, a full video out of this thing in the first couple of hours that I have my hands on it, right? Oh, I'm liking this thing so far. I think it's one of those tanks that might be a little bit contagious as well. Uh, as to when you kind of get into a, a rhythm or momentum with the vehicle, I think it might really pan out. So yeah, just a GG there. We've got ourselves 5,000 damage in this tank destroyer. Let's move on. Do I think this thing is going to be OP? Look, I think I'm honestly just having a few lucky games. And I think for every time that things go my way, and you know you Amarak the T62A and you manage to hit those shells, I'm probably going to have a few awkward games as well. All right, this is going to be a real test for this tank. Do you know why? Because we're playing against Object 268 version 5, uh, fours. <laughs> I'm going to get so confused. In my Object 268 version 5. So let's find out if we're one better than those tanks. Okay, so what do I want to use on this tank? Do I want to use the turbo or do I want to use the enhanced durability? I think I'm going to go with the enhanced durability so I can keep my tracks on more often. Honestly, with this kind of build, this thing is pretty much going to be untrackable. But I will be a lot slower. No, yeah, I think I'm uh, I think I'm going to go with the durability anyway. It worked out well for me on the last map, and I think the idea of having a turbo on this tank unless you need it is probably a bit of a misplay. All right, so let's make our way into the town. And this is where this thing is beautiful, right? I'm basically like an Object 268 version 4 with regards to my DPM that has higher alpha damage, um, better penetration, and also, importantly, has way better accuracy, so I should be able to deliver it. And also, how about the turret? So it's basically giving up armor to be able to gain flexibility. But the thing that I really love about this tank is having those full-blooded tank destroyer rounds, you know? None of these fake tank destroyer rounds, like real HE, real AP, real heat. So let's get ourselves into this position and see if we can get an ambush shot off. Usually you can manage to poach a shell onto something along here. And then hopefully we can move on immediately afterwards without losing all of our HP. So I'm hoping that the 268... Oh, I could have reloaded an HE shell there, but I didn't. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Nice kind of ambush shot off there. I'm not going to be ready to deliver another shell, though. That's the only real downside of this tank, I guess, is that um, its DPM just feels quite lackluster and probably a good thing, too. If its DPM wasn't lackluster, I can imagine this thing would be outrageous. One thing I just thought about in this tank is this thing could be able to reverse side scrape very well indeed. 
Where the hell's the leopard prototype, huh? Shoot straight in his tank. Did he not see me there? Oh! <gasps> Man, the camera rating on this thing. I can get 27% camera rating on the move. Any other heavy tank I believe there would have probably been spotted in those bushes. You can just be a real sneaky tank in these bushes as well. Oh my word. It's getting more and more interesting by the minute. Oh, I forgot which way I was facing. That wasn't very good, was it? I'm going to have to repair that. That's an ammo rack. My word, I love this little position. If I was in a 268 version 4 here, I just don't think I would have the flexibility without the turret to be able to really work this location. Whereas with this tank, with this gun, with these bushes here, oh, this is actually a pretty savage situation. How many times am I going to say that word this video? Savage, savage, savage. Well, I think, I honestly think it is a bit of a savage tank. I really do. Um, wow. I'm loving this thing so far. Loving this thing so far. Why do we have to spend free experience on it? Oh, God. There's 10,000 available on the European server. That's going to be harsh. Oh, hell, they can't even see me there. Are you actually kidding me? Absolutely amazing. That camera rating when I'm stationary. Oh, I'm... Oh, no, 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 no,
because it's effectively Wargaming adding in new content to the game, but charging, frankly, outrageous prices for it. This tank will have a minimum bid of 155,000 free experience. It's going to be the only one with free experience. And I look at Wargaming telling us that in a couple of ways. One, they're saying, dump all of your free experience because you're not going to need it for the rest of the event. Or two, that they're being nice to you saying, look, if you have to convert to be able to purchase this tank, you're not going to have to do it again. But if we were to convert that amount of free experience right now, what would it cost us? It would cost us 6,200 gold. But that's not taking into account that we'd have to go and play, I don't know, about 150 games or 100 games of World of Tanks to be able to earn that. So you'd have to play World of Tanks for two days and then throw Wargaming 6,200 gold to be able to convert the, the free experience to be able to then min bid on this tank. And I can tell you, it's not going to be going for that low. One thing that's very interesting about this vehicle is that once 5,000 bids or 10,000 bids are made for this vehicle, Wargaming is going to show a competitive bid. And what the competitive bid will show is, I believe, the middle point of what the bids are. So if you're able to bid the median, which is the middle number, then you're guaranteed to be able to get the tank. But obviously, that is the middle number. And so it's going to shift up and up and up and up. And so some people might be able to sneak in bids that are l much lower than the competitive bid if not that many people have enough free experience. And as somebody who has 902,000 free experience, I expect this thing is going to go for a very high amount. Another thing that is pretty toxic about this delivery system is that as it updates every 10 minutes, unless you want to get up at some ungodly hour of the morning or stay up all night, and already we can see for the very first time what the competitive bid is. That suggests that of the 41,000 or the 68,000 people who were playing early on this Saturday morning, people have already bid pretty darn high amounts. And that is something that is only going to go higher. 10,800 people have bid and the middle, the median bid right now is 222,000. So you'll be sure there's, there's somebody out there who's bid 500k and there'll probably be a lot of people out there who have min bid as well. So this is a very exciting tank. It's a reward vehicle, so it's not going to Im impact ranked. But if you're the kind of player who wants to get marks for excellence or somebody who wants to get an ace tanker or more likely somebody who just wants to play what, at least for me in my short play session of the tank, was quite a fun vehicle. If you're not in a position where you've saved up a lot of free experience, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people converting experience at a horrible ratio to be able to get this tank. And the bid's already up to about 10,000 gold that you'd have to spend. And so Wargaming, while I'm happy that at least you are doing this competitive bid so that people aren't going to bid outrageously higher, there's also no doubt that because this is going to show the middle number of all of the bids, that it's going to progress higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. And while it's undoubtedly an exciting way to release new content, that will undoubtedly make Wargaming a lot of gold or free experience that people pay gold to be able to get. <sighs> I hate having to pay more than I have to. Is anyone else out there like that? I'm the kind of person who usually won't buy something as soon as it's released. I'll wait for it to come for a reasonable price, at least in real life. Like if you're buying a big TV, you probably wait for Black Friday to be able to purchase it and hopefully get at least 10 or 20% off. In World of Tanks, however, it's a, it's a little bit different. There's not really any Black Fridays. It's kind of like bend over and, and whip out your wallets for Wargaming uh, as they release new content into the game. At least we know this is the only one that's going to be worth free experience. There's probably going to be another tier 10 tank that is going to be sold for gold, at least on the European server. And there are probably going to be tier 8 premium tanks coming up as well that are going to be for gold. So exciting stuff. Do I think it's worth it? Look, if you've got, I don't know, about 200, 250,000 free experience lying around, I think this is a good pickup if you're in a position like me where you've unlocked all of the vehicles and you don't mind spending some free experience that otherwise you'd probably put into field mods or you put into crew skills. However, one thing I would like to highlight is that 
Uh, do you think that Wargaming, with how they have uh, released an idea of what Crew 2.0 might be like, are actually trying to get us to dump out all of our free experience now so that when Crew 2.0 comes out, people like me aren't sitting on a million free, uh, free experience and we can actually invest that into crews that will make us more competitive in tanks that we can actually use in ranked. And so, ladies and gents, this is an exciting event. I don't have 100% of the answer so far. Let me know in the comments what you think about the release of the Object 268 version 5. Are you going to be bidding for it? Do you think it's outrageously priced? How much are you going to bid in the comments down below? And what do you think it's actually going to end up going for? And tune into the stream tomorrow as Sleepy Baby, who's probably going to get up in the middle of the night just to, to see how he's doing, um, is going to have one of these on my main account. That's exciting. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that's it for the Object 268 version 5. If you appreciate me getting up and getting this content out for you so you can make informed decisions as much as possible, please support the uh, the videos by giving it a like. If you hated the video, however, give it a thumbs down and let me know in the comments what you think about this whole event and the Object 268 version 5. And as always, uh, I'll see you tomorrow in the next YouTube video, which will be under the hammer. And thanks for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.